coming on to the second part of the discussion regarding the specialized blood components in the previous video we have seen about the uh, little about the history of blood transfusion and uh, how the era is changing in the use of blood components and we saw a little about the uh, specialized uh, rbc components which are being used in this part we will be seeing about um, the platelets uh, which are being uh, modified in several ways platelets are uh, usually what we call as random donor platelets are those having a volume of around 50 to 70 ml with a platelet count of 5.5 into 10 to the power 10 uh, per bag and uh, they should have less than or less than 1.2 into 10 to the power 9 rbcs and less than 0.12 into 10 to the power 9 wbcs and the expiry date is 5 days and, and uh, during the storage it should be under continuous mild agitation to prevent the platelets from getting activated and the storage is at uh, 20 to 22 degrees celsius and the disadvantage is um, usually bacterial contamination at this uh, storage temperature indication is that platelets uh, are given for those patients with count less than 5000 per microliter regardless of the clinical condition and for those if uh, with risk of bleeding we can give for them uh, for platelet count of around uh, 5000 to 10000 and those under chemotherapy and uh, for massive transfusion uh, with platelet less than 50000 also we can transfuse platelet some of the AIBB that is American Association of uh, Blood Banking recommendation for profile access is being shown here along with the evidence grade of uh, prophylaxis the single donor platelet is uh, being uh, 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 used in an in large numbers these days and for this um, uh, the platelet which is being collected from a single donor which is a single donor of single donor uh, platelet is being equivalent to six to eight units of rdp and the experience the same as rdp that is five days and the extra advantage is that it is already de liquid depleted and less antigenic stimulation and uh, some of the differences between the sdp and we uh, uh, rdp is being shown here we can see that the count is good and the volume um, is uh, almost equal and uh, we have uh, uh, less risk of getting aluminization and the risk of bacterial contamination is also less since this is a completely closed uh, system of collection however the cost is still matters because uh, uh, it matters for around 30,000 to 60,000 per bag whereas RDP costs about 5,000 to 10,000 per bag there are uh, there's a concept of leukol reduced platelets which is being done using a specialized leukol reduction filter for platelets and studies uh, show that 95 percentage of these leukol depleted platelets have uh, less than 8.3 into 10 to the power 5 wbcs and uh, about 75 percentage of these products have more than or equal to 5.5 into 10 to the power 10 platelets and 90 percentage of them uh, maintain a ph of uh, more than or equal to 6.2 at the end of the allowable storage period and the indication is the same as that of the liquor reduced um, rbcs and uh, irradiated platelets are also there and uh, these can be irradiated until the last expiry date and the post irradiation uh, expiry date is the same that is the five days um, i mean that is the original expiry date uh, regardless of the date of irradiation and the platelets do not get damaged up to as high as dose of 50 gray radiation and the indications are also same as that of the irradiated prbcs here's the concept of volume reduced platelets in which the uh, platelet concentration is being reduced from 60 to 70 ml to 10 to 15 ml per bag and however uh, during this process the in vitro properties like uh, platelet morphology mean volume the synergistic aggregation and the platelet factor 3 activity is uh, still maintained and um, the recovery rate is also 85 percentage however addition of 10 percentage of acda to these platelets can prevent the aggregation during resuspension the indications are uh, for those at risk of cardiac overload and to minimize ABO antibody infusion and in case of intrauterine transfusions. Uh, coming to the plasma, uh, fresh frozen, frozen plasma uh, having a volume of uh, 200 to 300 ml which is separated within 6 hours of uh, collection rapidly frozen at 82 uh, at minus 80 degree and uh, storage at uh, minus 30 degree. 
and uh, has a normal plasma level of uh, stable and uh, stable factors and 70 percentage normal value of labile coagulation factors the indications are um, active bleeding and multiple uh, factor deficiencies in case of liver disease or in case of DIC or uh, any coagulopathy in case of uh, massive transfusions or thrombocytic throm or thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura or familial uh, kind of factor deficiencies and uh, an antithrombin 3 deficiency. The contraindications that we have to keep in mind are those um, having hypoproteinemia and uh, there should it should not be used as a source of immunoglobulin and also the uh, for those with ptt less than 18 seconds we have to use it with caution there is something called as liquid plasma or cryopruor plasma which is that which remains after the separation of cryoprecipitate um, and this plasma can be stored for more than one year uh, uh, at minus 30 degree uh, celsius and uh, however there is no labile coagulation factors that like 5 and 8 and uh, in this also there is half of the fibrinogen is still uh, being uh, present in the liquid or cryopore plasma coming to cryoprecipitate it is being prepared from ffp thawed at 4 degrees celsius and resuspended in 10 to 20 ml of plasma frozen and stored at minus 30 degree and uh, infused within six hours of thawing it has a very good uh, content of factor 8 fibrinogen and factor 13 which are being used in several uh, indications in adults like hypo or dysfibrinogenemia uh, or uh, a hemorrhage in case of cardiac surgery and a massive hemorrhage or trans uh, transfusion or in case of surgical bleeding also in units it can be used in case of anticoagulant uh, factor 8 and 13 deficiencies and this fibrinogenemia and uh, congenital fibrinogen deficiency and von willebrand disease coming to the granulocyte concentrate it is the same as that of the uh, uh, SDP collection in this we, uh, we will collect the granulocytes these are being uh, useful in case of uh, those under aggressive chemotherapy with profound neutropenia less than 500 per microliter at which there are uh, at which they are at a high risk of uh, uh, bacterial and fungal infections and those people with bone marrow hypoplasia it has to be transfused as soon as collected so the all the TTI testing has to be done prior to the collection and uh, minimum therapeutic dose is around 1 into 10 to the power of 10 granulocytes per day however uh, corticosteroids or uh, GCSF can be used in donors to uh, increase the uh, level of circulating granulocytes some drawbacks is that it causes GVHD in immunocompromised patients and um, the compatibility testing should be done because uh, there will be little RBC contamination coming to the plasma derivatives they come into use where uh, uh, we should be cautions uh, caution um, uh, regarding the volume and the efficacy in increasing the INR in coagulation uh, time the most commonly used is the fibrinogen concentrates which are being prepared from pooled plasma there is one gram per vial and uh, uh, this has a faster reconstitution than cryoprecipitate so it is time re time uh, reserving and the dose is uh, actually calculated by a target level minus measured level into 1.7 into body weight and uh, there is less risk of transfusion reactions and pathogen transmission comparing to cryoprecipitate this is a table showing the comparison between the cryoprecipitate and fibrinogen and uh, another one plasma derivative is uh, prothrombin complex concentrates um, in this we can uh, uh, use to manage the rapid oral anticoagulant reversal in case of any emergencies or uh, for pers persons who are at risk of hypervolemia and massive uh, bleeding and uh, it is used in uh, balanced it has a uh, balanced proportions of um, factor 2 7 9 and 10 and is natural anticoagulant proteins like c and s but however it is contraindicated in poor prior uh, allergic reactions or pregnancy or puperium time or uh, those at risk of thrombosis or dic or recent thrombotic events and uh, those with the history of uh, heparin induced thrombocytopenia there are uh, four factor uh, like uh, it is roughly said that four uh, 
prothrombin concentrates is uh, compared to FFP. Uh, we can see that 1.5 liters of FFP has the same effect as 60 ml of uh, this product. So it is very um, volume less but equal effic efficient uh, product. And there is something called as factor 8 concentrates, which we, we have read of heard uh, in use during hemophilia patients. And uh, they can be prepared from large volume of pooled plasma uh, and prepared by pasteurization or solvent detergent method or monoclonal purification. The product is usually available as lyophilized form and free from viral transmissions. And uh, we have some other factor, some other plasma derivatives also like uh, immune serum globulins, normal serum albumin, plasma protein fractions, and uh, RHD immunoglobulins. This, uh, the next two, two, three slides will be about the summary of all about this discussion. Uh, this is as a short form and um, the take home message of this discussion. And researches are being still done to see if there are any recombinant or uh, artificial blood substitutes which we can use to eliminate the still uh, continuing risk of blood transfusions. Thank you. Keep supporting us. Thank you.